this never gets old. Never gets old. Looking at that. Sky, no rain, no wind. We're having it. No video last week. Apologies. A couple of people noticed, which was nice. Been ill, man flu, man thrax, hebola. I had a lot of stuff on in my sort of job, so that's been busy. And I didn't want to feel like I had to make videos, so but just the weather has been gopping, manky. But now it looks good, so I'm going to go up, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, paramount luggage stuff that I've got going on, uh, and just chat for a bit, really. Might go and look at a couple of old airfields. Let's uh, see what happens. at all. It's going to be cold. Waterproof boots. Finally. Testing, testing. Okay, we've got some better visibility than the last couple of times. No wind though, no wind at all. That sock is dead, so I'm going to go for some length because I'm going to be running for a while. You've got the radio control guys down there or one of them anyway so I'm gonna use his runway I think let's just turn this on and prime it while I remember on switch primer bulb if you can see in that squeeze it till it goes hard and now let's get this wing out on this wet grass and not hang around now I bought a balaclava like a skiing one a real thin neoprene type thing but I don't think I'll need it and I forgot my neck scarf which I think I probably could have done with in the excitement to get out of the house done to me close enough for government work <laughs> That takeoff was really light. It needed a lot more commitment than I was at first about to give it. But we're up. We're more or less on course. Going over that way. Let's lean right a little bit. Oh, am I going to be able to get my foot cam on? Another thing I forgot to do before I left. Foot cam. Snotty nose already. Get some altitude here. I'm messing around. Yay! Foot cam! Gloves time. So I can see Santa Pod already. It's those uh, windmills over there. It used to be an Air Force base. There were quite a lot around here during the war. Bomber command, fire command. And then it was a drag strip. I don't know the exact history. It's a while since I looked it up. But it was a drag strip. Okay, it's quite a famous one in, in Europe. And they named it Santa Pod. It was Poddington is the name of the village it's next to. And 
they named it Santa Pod, you know, as a sort of funny nod towards the names of the drag strips in California and that area over there with their sort of Spanish roots in their names. And it's been Santa Pod ever since. Good place to go of an evening when there's a race meeting up. They have some like exhibition -y type pieces in there. They've got a jet car or two. Just cars with massive great jet engines in. Right, let's go for this other glove. Always fraught with uh, confusion and danger. switch while messing around with this. Let's try and get this giant glove through there. This is no fun, to tell the truth, but a necessary evil. For me anyway. Right, we've changed course significantly there, so let's uh, spin around. It's cold, but not terribly cold. Let's go look at the drag strip over there. So anyway, yeah, no video last week. I've had a cold, a bit busy, and the weather's been manky, so no chance to fly. I think I had one 10 minute flight and I, I think I, I didn't even, my camera wasn't charged or anything. Look at that, on the horizon there, that's slow. A lot of steam. Right, we'll look at some trimmings out here. One, two. It started descending a lot quicker then, all of a sudden. And the trim's out. So there's the drag strip over there. Let's go over there and stay away from the, uh, the wind turbines. Oh, it feels good to be up. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, I've got a few things going on. This the road to Icarus thing, I'm slowly getting moving towards that. I've been talking to Giles Fowler quite a bit about that. Because he's into the para camping as well, and this first stage is all about camping and being able to camp. And uh, as I mentioned in the other video, Giles is great with making these little things on a sewing machine, so great at thinking in 3D. So I normally have my reserve on this arm here, hangs there, and nothing on this side. So I said to Giles, wouldn't it be great if I had a similar sized thing for this side? Uh, and he said, yeah, draw me a picture. So I drew these vague sketches. Got my hood getting sucked back there. So I drew these vague sketches in pencil and a bit of paper and sent them to him with a photograph of a ruler on them. And uh, this is what came back. This is this bag that sits on the arm. Uh, it's got a little pouch with a mirror on top for checking fuel on a retractable springy thing. There's your uh, quarter mile drag strip. Quarter mile's not a long way, especially up here. The start line is down there, and I don't know if you can see the. Uh, well, we can drop down a little bit. We're at a thousand feet here. We are tip steering. Some work going on down there. They're usually doing things. They have like monster trucks in there occasionally and things like that. And there's the finish line down there. Yeah, what was I saying? Anyway, 
this bag. I'm thinking I can get my whole tent in that bag and possibly even the paramotor cover, which effectively frees up anything on my lap. So one of those duffel bags. It frees up that for anything I want to carry. So I'm still going to go sort of pretty lightweight, but definitely on a budget. Um, I could go and buy a little camping stove. I could, yeah, no, everyone's given me options. A good one the other day was um, some military MRE rations. Uh, yeah, we are heading towards Bedford Aerodrome. Or Autodrome. Used to be an aerodrome. Anyway, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to make, you know, just for fun and because it's a cool thing to do, I'm going to make a little alcohol stove. I've been down the rabbit hole of alcohol stoves for a while on YouTube. Uh, make a little one of those. I've got a little camping cup coming. Uh, some of these meals, <laughs> adventure foods, dehydrated meals, I reckon. The Icarus is only one night away, so I reckon I can carry uh, enough to stay hydrated throughout it, because that's important. Uh, carry enough to have an evening meal and a cup of coffee at the first checkpoint, or the first landing, wherever that turns out to be. Uh, and then get up in the morning, have a cup of coffee and a breakfast, and then start the flying. Lunch on that second day, I think you just have to work out. You're going to have to put down somewhere, and you might end up putting down for a while. Look at this. So gorgeous. Ah, Colworth. I was working there on, uh, on Tuesday last week, or Wednesday. In that building down there. Let's stay on target here. We're looking for a giant airfield. Train. So good to be back in the sky. It is horrid when you get into this. And then the weather keeps you on the ground for a week or two. Even 10 minutes, 10 minutes up in the air gives you the fix and you're okay, but you get down and you're still, uh, it's crap weather. We've got four miles to target. Can't see any other traffic than that little thing over there. Uh, that you can't see at least, over there. Just below those contrails, or chemtrails, obviously, of course. So where was I? I know I was nattering about something. Yeah, so a little alcohol stove, enough meths to boil four cups of water. Um, two of those are for meals, two of those are for a coffee. And I think that would be pretty cool. I, in the bag, obviously I'm not short of space, I'll have some chocolate bars and stuff like that for living on. I was talking to Simon Walker of The Adventurists and uh, I said, for the first one, which I was woefully unprepared for, it turns out, for the first one I was just planning to live on bottles of water and chocolate bars and he said in reality you do but being able to make a coffee first thing in the morning when you're cold and you've got to take off is uh, that's a priceless thing so you can go really extreme really lightweight you know could just have a tarp and cover everything and sleep on the grass or use your wing as a sleeping bag and things like that but I mean that's fair you could do that and if you're racing and you're conserving any extra weight to carry fuel then yeah, no, go for that, but I, 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 that's why I'm going to adventure class, or I would, is, you know, I don't want to get that extreme. I don't want to be uncomfortable for the sake of a race. I want to be, you know, I want to have a good time. So, and that's what it's about. So, coming up on the old airfield now, it's a storage place for cars, I think. I, think, I know there's a go-kart track down there. Or, or some kind of racing company. I'm not sure exactly what goes on, what they do. Uh, I'll be visiting this place and Santa Pod where we've just been uh, in spring next year as part of my uh, massive long thing. There's a little clue. My massive long thing. That is not what she said. This, uh, this never gets old. Never gets old. Looking at that.
Also looking forward to having a low cloud day at some point over the winter, get above the clouds for the first time. We can see lots of steam and smoke rising in the air, someone's got a little fire down there. All of them say not much in the way of wind. Yeah, I can see racing cars going around down there. That was quite some airfield, wasn't it? Look at that, that's a runway and a half. Whoa, significantly colder at a thousand feet. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a circuit here with cars nipping around. And then the rest of this is just covered in cars. I don't know if they're new cars waiting to go out or old cars from the scrappage scheme or something. 28 miles an hour. Nose starting to run. Oh, it looks like there is still a little runway down there at the end. And a sock. Let's head for home. No need to. There's no need to be that high. Getting a bit of rockiness. Yeah, we need some new glove technology. We need my my. These two fingers are freezing cold. Caravan park in the woods. I wonder what that is. Nice place to get away from it all. Got a paramotor flying over. It's my mum's house over there. I won't go. But uh, yeah, it's starting to feel the cold now. I have got hot cup of coffee in here, but gloves make everything difficult, and I'm not really prepared to take my gloves off. I'm at just about a thousand feet. I'd like a thermometer. Just so I knew. Big old plane up there. I don't know what that is. It looks very big. It's like one of those big RAF planes. One of those galaxy or globe master jobs. Bigger than Hercules anyway. And there's something else over here. Busy all of a sudden. Yeah, he's a big bugger. turn around to see where he went but I don't want to make any course changes. I don't know what the separation there was. I guess it was 700 feet plus I reckon. It's certainly the closest I've been. I've got more traffic over there going right to left. It's got a strobe on I can see. Let's get busy and cold. I got another one up there. I wonder if mum's out. She shouldn't be in this cold. Mind you, it's warmer down there. horses in these people's houses so I don't want to go too close but anyway if you are there mum hello I can see the conservatory right let's get back on the main road keep an eye out for all this plenty traffic that's up here and if you 
watching this man, I didn't text you to tell you I was going over because it's freezing and I'm not taking my gloves off for you, not anybody. Are we still rolling? Foot cam's still rolling. Starting to shiver. Okay, let's just get around the edge of the town here. Yeah? And then we'll nip across to the landing point and uh, go for a uh, 100 mile an hour landing. So good to get up, just so good. And for all those guys that didn't manage it today, I feel sorry for you. I know that pain of waiting and waiting and waiting for a flyable day, and then you've got to do something on that day, like go to work or whatever. Go fly over the in-laws. I've managed to maintain about 30 miles an hour throughout this whole flight, I think, in whatever direction I went in. I didn't fly into wind at any point, it's been mainly elements of crosswind. Hello Brian and Sheila, if you're down there. Yeah, heated, heated glove liners, maybe, I mean it just makes it bulkier and bulkier and bulkier. But that's if you were going to do, you know, any time in the air in cold weather, which you don't have to do, but, you know, for some people that's their thing. Okay, I can see my landing field. I slowly lose a bit of height, get down to about 500. Can I find my house? It is bloody fresh up above a thousand feet. Let's get down. Woo. Okay, so there's my field next to that lake there. Uh, watching out for radio control guys. They said they'll watch out for me, so he knows which way I'm gonna come in. This has been probably just over 40 minutes by the time I get down. And that's plenty in this cold. It's perfect to be up and just the right amount of time because I'm starting to feel it now. Seat is away and tight or as tight as I can do it with gloves on. Sock is not doing anything down there. Radio control guys, I don't know where your plane is. I'm hoping you do. Or are you just watching me? No, I think you are. And socks not doing anything, so I'll just come in for some good distance. go. Nice and gently does it. Oh. He's down. Wing going forward, fine by me. Oh, that was a fast landing. Stayed on feet in front of people. Oh, still got leg straps on. What a mistake and a maker. That's the funny thing. Flying's exciting. When 
get excited here. You don't always think straight. Oh, they're up. They get that pain up quick. 